By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And we are back in Vorthuizen, the Netherlands. We're at the Dwarven Warriors Cup. And we're going to look at a match between Edo and Erwin. And Edo is a player on the left with the cool Granite Gargoyle playmat. And he's playing with a white and blue deck with a little bit of that black splash, you know, Demonic Tutor and Mind Twist. And his deck is looking very, very powerful. He's playing the blue power, you know, Time Walk, Ancestral Recall, Mind Twist. And then he's also playing those, you know, common white cards that are so good at controlling the board. Disenchant, Swords, Balance, he's got some Sarah Angels. Very, very strong deck. And his opponent is Erwin. And I have to say, I'm kind of liking Erwin's deck a little bit more, to be honest. He doesn't play with blue power, but he's playing with one very cool card, Reverse Damage. His deck is white, red, and black. Now, before I go and start with the deck deck, I've got deck photos of both of these beautiful decks. I would first like to point out that you can also skip the deck deck, skip the intro, and the easiest way to do that is check the description below because there you will find several timestamps. One of those timestamps reads MTG Games. Click on that one and that will take you straight to the action. And also you can find all the information about the rule set. So this is only alpha and beta in the Dwarven Warriors Cup in Vorthuizen. That's always the case. It's a yearly event. It's kind of a legendary thing in the Netherlands. So I guess I've shared everything I wanted to share in the intro. That means it's time for the deck deck. And I'm going to start with the deck of Edo. Let's have a look. And here we see the deck of Edo, and man, this is this is some powerful stuff. Also, check out the sideboard with all the COPs, right? I'm guessing those COP reds are definitely going to see some play after the first game. But let's focus on uh, main board here. We see very little creatures. This deck, I mean, I guess it wants to protect the angels with the counter spells once you play the angels out. But it maybe you know also wants to win on whatever the opponent is playing, right? There's a control magic in here. Also for Cyblast, so he can deal quite a lot of direct damage. Uh, he can get a lot of cards with those uh, with the Time Twister, Brain Geyser, Ancestral Recall. He also has a Jam Day Tome in here. So, I mean, this is a strong deck. And, I mean, this Mind Twist as well looks very, very dangerous. Mind Twist actually gets a lot better when you're playing with power because it's easier to get the mana you need. Remember, when you've got a Mind Twist in hand, every Mox equals a card lost for your opponent. And the sooner you play the Mind Twist the better the card actually is. So, I mean, this is just a really brutal, devastating deck. I'm kind of feeling sorry for Erwin. You know what? Let's take a look at Erwin's deck and see uh, what he can do against this violence. And here we see the deck of Erwin. Now, first of all, Erwin, what a lovely, lovely deck photo, man. A beautiful, beautiful thing to look at. And I really like that reverse damage there in the middle. So maybe just to refresh your memory, because it's a card you don't see very often. Reverse damage, two white and one. It's a rare. It's an instant. And it reads, all damage you have taken from any one source this turn is added to your life total instead of subtracted from it. So, for example, if your opponent attacks with a Sheevan Dragon, pumps it up to an 8-5, deals 8 damage... You can play reverse damage and then the damage from the Shivan is turned into life gain instead. So that way it doesn't just prevent the damage, no, you gain the life as well. And I think that's what makes reverse damage very strong, especially against, for example, the fireballs that we also see here in Erwin's deck. They're being used a lot as finishers, right? With reverse damage, you can kind of gain life. Reverse damage is also really interesting with the Earthquake because Earthquake is a source that we also see here in Erwin's deck that deals damage to both players. So you could play the reverse damage and then the damage that you're getting from the Earthquake is turned into life. But your opponent is still taking the damage from the Earthquake. So that's kind of like some little interesting uh, synergy. It would be nice, Erwin, if you would have also played with I for an eye. Because then you can play I for an eye and reverse damage. That would be really cool. But uh, maybe that's a little bit too janky. Uh, talking about the rest of the deck, I see very little jank. It's a very good deck. Of course, there's no blue in here. So that means we have no blue power. But we do have very powerful cards. It's way more creature heavy than the deck of Edo. And I think one of the strategies of Erwin here is going to be just try to keep playing out the threats. Maybe early game go as quick, too quick for Edo so that he cannot like counter the threats. Uh, you know, make sure that you try to just play through the counter spells that he's kind of played out all his counter spells. As soon as Erwin kind of finds out, hey, Edo is playing with power sinks, he's probably kind of going to change his strategy and keep an eye on the amount of manas that Edo has opened. So there's kind of a lot of layers to how Erwin could or could not play out his creatures. 
What I'm liking very much here are the set trolls. He's playing with a lot of black mana, right? So it's going to be quite easy for him to make those set trolls into 3-3 three, three regeneration creatures. And that's just great value. And yes, of course, Edo has the swords to deal with those set trolls. Um, but, you know, on the other hand, he's got so many creature threats that maybe there comes a point in the game where, uh, you know, Erwin manages to get enough bodies onto the battlefield without being countered. And then perhaps Edo is through his uh, uh, Swords to Plowshares, and then a set troll can get really, really annoying because how can you get rid of it? And both players are playing with Disenchants, by the way, and Swords to Plowshares, so I think there are just going to be a lot of answers in this matchup, and it's going to be really difficult to get a permanent to stick to the board. I also think that the artifacts are not really going to stand a chance with all the Disenchants, but hey, I've been wrong again, so, I mean, who cares about my opinion, right? <laughs> and then when we look at the sideboard, um, I'm not really seeing a lot. The Red Elemental Blast, of course, could play a huge role in this matchup. He could board in the Forks, the Terrors. He could use against the Sari Angels. Perhaps that's better than the Swords because the Swords are also giving your opponent life. So he could make that switch after sideboard. Okay, so we've looked at the deck of Erwin. We've looked at the deck of Edo. So what are we waiting for? Let's go to the match. Game number one, here we go. On the left, we have Edo, and on the right, we have Ervin, and he's on the play, and he's playing with the white, red, and black deck, starting here with the Mox Jet and Passing Turn. And his opponent, Edo, is playing with blue, white, and a little bit of a black splash with uh, Demonic Tutor and a Mind Twist, starting with an Island Passing Turn. And a Edo's deck looks very much like the deck, maybe a little bit more aggressive. He's playing with a full play set of Psy Blasts. Ooh, there we see a turn two Hypnotic Spectre. And this is what I talked about in the deck deck. If Erwin can be quick enough, let's see if he's got a Swords. He is passing turn. Of course, Swords is an instant, so he can just wait with casting it. Curious to see what's going to happen. So there's the attack. Oh, he's shuffling up. He doesn't have a Swords to Plowshares. This is great news already here for Erwin. And maybe you're wondering, why have I called his deck the Headache deck? Well, because of this card. He's playing a full playset of Psyblasts. Unfortunately for Edo, he's losing it here because it could have been a great answer for the Hypnotic Spectre. Now we're going into the second main of Erwin. He's not finding another creature. Or is he tapping four? What are we going to see? There is an Icy Manipulator. And I was kind of expecting a Power Sink here by Edo, but it's not there. He's passing the turn again. I wonder now if he has a Psy Blast. I guess not because again he's shuffling up. Oh, this is devastating for Edo. This is going to be one of these hippie games. Counterspell gone. Doesn't have double blue. And there is another white. He really needs... Oh, there's a mind twist. This is brutal. And look at that. Edo is picking up the cards. He's saying, you know what, man? You've got this one. Whatever. Whatever. <laughs> wow. And, you know, Edo, sometimes this happens. That's also part of old school magic. You know, you need to draw the cards in the right order. At least for Edo, he can now start the next game, which is really important in his deck because he's playing a lot of counter magic. So between starting and becoming second, there's a world of difference. Both players are going to go into their sideboards and we'll catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two, and let's hope for an actual game in this one because that game one was just brutal from uh, from Erwin, but this is a whole different ball game again because Edo is on the start. Maybe Erwin cannot find that Mox or Edo can find a Mox. Remember, he's also fully powered. So let's just see what's going to happen here. There we see a Scrub Blend into a Soul Ring and a Pass Turn. So no blue source here for Edo. There is a Swamp by Erwin and a Pass. Let's see what he can do. Tapping three. Okay, there's a Circle of Protection red. That was as to be expected, although he didn't see a lot of red in game one. And there's a pass turn. We see that Badlands. So both players taking it easy. There's a COP black. Okay, so at least that can help against the Hippie. But Edo has a serious land issue again. So I really hope he can make this into a proper game. And let's see, there is a Plains. No set troll, no Hypnotic Spectre on the side of Erwin. That is interesting. There is an island kind of slamming it there on the table. Looks like he's not really happy with what he's drawing. And here's he's passing again. And this is, of course, kind of part of Edo's strategy, right? His strategy is much more control. At least he now has access to a possible power sink if Erwin plays something out. Remember, Edo is only playing with three creatures. And I believe there are three Sarah Angels. 
Whereas Ervin is much more creature heavy, so I'm kind of expecting him to start playing out creatures pretty pretty soon now. I actually would have expected a hippie or a set troll already hitting the board. Perhaps he also has a possible power sink in the back of his mind and he wants to wait for the right moment. So looking at his hand here, I believe he's got seven in hand passing turn. There is more lands, so this is good news for Edo. He's finding the lands he needs and now he has to make a decision when to play something out and leave an opening for his opponent Erwin or just to pass turn and keep your two blue open for a counter spell and your mana open for a power sink. Well, let's see, okay, there's something tapping four. What are we gonna see here? There's an icy manipulator. Of course, icy is great because Erwin can use it in the end step of Edo to kind of tap down his mana. And here we see some action. There is a steel artifact. Wow, that is pretty cool. I believe this one came from the sideboard. This is really sweet tech taking over the icy manipulator here. That is just absolutely great. And I mean, I can't really see a response here. Okay, there is some kind of response. Oh, of course, from the sideboard, Red Elemental Blast, a perfect answer. But I think actually, if you're um, Edo, it's not even that bad because, you know, Aaron's now lost one of his like top cards against Edo. So it could be worse. I mean, the downside for Edo here is that he kind of tapped out almost completely, so he no longer can counter. So I'm kind of expecting Erwin here to play out a creature, if he has one, of course. Going through his hand. Looks like he is going to cast something. And there is another Icy Manipulator. Oh, man, it's so annoying to play against Icy's. It's great to play with them, but it's so annoying to play against them. And there is a Brain Geyser. So he's gonna draw three more cards. Oh, devastating red elemental blast. Erwin just has all the answers. I mean, man, that's just devastating here for Edo. And again, he cannot counter, he's stepped out. I mean, this is gonna be really difficult already. And there we see a disenchant on the soul ring. Interesting, I would have expected him to disenchant, although he can also tap down the land, so it doesn't really matter that much. So this is as to be expected, right? He passes the turn and in the upkeep is going to tap down the lands. And this is super annoying for Edo. And, and obviously he's going uh, to look for, uh, for disenchants because they're instant, so he can play them during the upkeep in response to Erwin tapping down uh, his lands. But this is really, really bad. For, for Edo here. And what, what Erwin is hoping for right now is just an hypnotic specter to kind of, you know, get rid of the cards in hand. And he's doing the same in passing turn. There is a Mox. Okay, this is actually not too bad. He's got some more sources and there's a pass. So this game is really different than game one. In game one, we saw, you know, Erwin really being the aggressor and now Erwin is playing really the control game against the control deck. And he's going to tap down the same lance again and pass turn. Really wants to keep that blue tap down so that Edo is not able to counter or play any power. There we see another mountain on the side of Erwin. And again a pass and a tap down. There is an island. Okay. And I'm just really waiting for Edo here to find disenchants. And maybe Erwin is also waiting for disenchants. So passing, turn again, and tapping down the lands. So quite interesting to see that Erwin is not playing out any creature threats. And Edo is actually slowly building up the board. I think this is not even bad for Edo. I thought you know, after that uh, disenchant and double icy, I'm like, ooh, Erwin is really in the driver's seat. But now that this game is taking longer, remember, Edo is really the control player here. I guess the bad thing for Edo here is that he's only got one blue open. And look at the amount of mana on the side of Erwin. And that's kind of, that kind of means that the power sinks are kind of useless here. Or does he have enough mana now to power sink? No, right? Look at this. If he still would have had the soaring, he could have played power sink here. So he's playing a jam day tome. And that's kind of devastating because that's going to give Erwin 
card advantage, and that's going to give him the win eventually. So he's going to tap down the lands again. Edo's going to draw. He really needs to find a disenchant. And then I guess I would even disenchant the book, to be honest. There we see a demonic tutor. Okay. And Aaron is stepped out. There's nothing he can do. He's not playing any counter magic anyway. I guess he's going to look up a disenchant here. Remember, this is alpha beta format, so we don't have access to cards like Dust to Dust, which would be absolutely great here. He's not playing red, so he... No, Shatterstorm is Antiquities. Yeah, so he's probably going to look up a disenchant. Time Walk. Interesting. Interesting. So he's casting it. He's taking on his turn. Finding an island. I wonder what he's going to do. Does he already have, like, disenchants in hand here? Tapping three. Tapping four. What are we going to see? Playing, oh, a Karma! Oh, 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 that's so sweet! From the sideboard. Wow, this Karma can be absolutely devastating here for Ervin. So Karma is going to deal damage for each swamp that he controls. It's devastating. Look at that. He's taking five damage. This is such an alternative way for Edo to win. I completely forgot about the Karma in his sideboard. This is fantastic. You don't see Karma often. This is very exciting stuff. And now he really needs a disenchant. And, and I mean, look at Edo. He's got two blue open. If he's able to protect the Karma... Disenchant, Do, are we going to see a counterspell? Yeah, counterspell. Oh, red elemental blast. Are we going to see a blue? Uh, no. Oh, man, that's devastating. I mean, I have to say, Erwin is really finding all the answers in this matchup. Oh, man, there was this moment here where I thought, okay, Edo, you can do this. The, the, the silver lining here is that um, uh, Erwin has already played out three Red Elemental Blasts. And I believe there is still one more Karma in the deck of Edo. Let's see what he can do. There's a Sarah Angel in a past turn. And, you know, this is good, you know, because it's going to keep at least one of the Icy's busy tapping down the Angel. So it's something... Erwin really in the tank here. He's got to choose, am I going to play out a creature? Am I going to draw a card? Uh, you know, he wants to keep the mana open for the icy. Of course, he's got a lot of mana, though, so it's not a big problem. And I guess this game is really a good demonstration why a power sink is very strong, but as, as soon as you're behind on mana, it just kind of loses its power. There is a draw with the book. And I guess, are we going to see a disenchant here? Oh, there's a terror coming in from the sideboard on the Sarah Angel. Are we going to see something like a counterspell? I don't think so. He's only got one blue open. I mean, power sync for zero is not really going to help him here. And I guess he's just going to pass turn with just one wide open. Yeah, exactly. Going to pass turn here. I think Edo really kind of needs like Ancestral Recall, draw some extra cards, try to find some answers, you know, get rid of that Gem Day Tome as fast as he can. So it looks like he's going to 19. Not quite sure why. Yeah, exactly. Going back up to 20. I was like, was there some kind of mana burn that I missed? Don't think so. He's going through his hand now. He's already one game down. It's a best of three. He needs. He knows that he needs to to win this one. And I kind of still feel that Edo is getting back into this, despite the fact. Okay, there we see a side blast. Okay, this is also a way to win. Remember, he's playing with four side blasts. There we see a balance. 
Okay, so that's going to take care of some of the cards in hand there. Let's have a look. He's got three cards in hand. I believe Ervin's got seven, so he's got to discard four. We see five seven lands on the side of Ervin. And I guess we're seeing six lands on the side of Edo because there are two mocks in there as well. So Fireball is going. Sarah Angel is going. Interesting. And this, of course, is the downside of kind of hoarding your cards, right? And remember, uh, Ada was also playing with Mind Twist. So Mind Twist and Balance makes it really... Oh, decks with Mind Twist and Balance make it really difficult because if you're going to keep your cards in hand because you don't want to overcommit because of the balance. But if you keep them in hand, you can also lose them to Balance, like, like in this example. But you can also lose them to Mind Twist. It's, it's always very, very difficult. And so there is a pass. I mean, it's still looking good for Erwin. But, you know, Edo is, is not out of this. The nice thing now, if Erwin wants to play something out, he can first step down to two blue if he wants to. Looks like he's just going to get a card, though. Tapping four. Yep, getting a card. Beautiful signed gem, they told him, by the way. Going through the motion. And he's going to pass turn, it seems, and use his Icy to tap down two lands of Edo. And he's really taking his time, you know. He really wants to win this one. He must feel like I should be far more ahead than I actually am. I guess that's kind of the feeling that Erwin has, because he's like, I've got the book. I've got the double icy. I was able to take care of that, you know, soaring early in the game. I had all the answers with my red elemental blasts, and yet Edo is still in it, and I only have one more card in hand than he does. How did this happen? And remember, you know, I mean, I still think if you're Edo, what you got to remember is he's already played out three red elemental blasts, which is just great. So he just taps down one land. There we see another island. And we see a pass. End of turn, a lightning bolt, I guess, on the life total here. Oh, he's going to use the COP red, of course. Mistake here by Erwin. Forgot about the COP red. Wow. So that is nice here for Edo. I can kind of understand that you're forgetting those Circle of Protections because they haven't done anything for the whole game, but they're still there. And it looks like he's going to tap four to just to draw a card again. I'm still a little bit surprised. I would have expected him kind of to flood the board with frets, you know, just get those creatures out and let's see if Edo has an answer, right? Can you counter them? Fine. And you, you, you're a counter spell down, you know, whatever. Because remember, he's playing four Satch Trolls, um, he's playing four Hypnotic Spectres, he's playing Serrat Angels. Oh, Demonic Tutor, interesting. Is he going to allow this? This is always tricky, right? Are you going to counter the Tutor or are you going to counter what he's going to tutor up? That is the question. I mean, he's got more than enough blue open. I mean, you know, if you're, if you're Erwin, what you could do is consider kind of trying to use your Ices. To, you could tap down four islands in total if you do it right, but then still Ada will have a couple of islands open. So Erwin going through his deck. And remember, he doesn't play with the blue power. So you, normally you would say, oh, he's probably going to look up Ancestral Recall. I guess he could look up a Mind Twist, but it's kind of risky against a deck with that much uh, counter magic. And also Ada only has three cards in hand. I really wonder what he's going to, what he looked up here. Okay, so that's that extra card in hand. Probably going to pass with only one mana open. Yeah, pass turn, you're tapping down the scrub land again. You know, at least by tapping down the scrub land, he doesn't have access to black, so it's, it's something. There's another karma! Remember, I said so, he's got more karma, and he can now back it up with counter magic. This is really nice.
Oh, a lot of damage. He's gonna go to six. Remember, Ada was playing four Psyblasts. He's only played out one so far, if I'm not mistaken. So he's got 12 more damage, direct damage in, in, his, in his deck. Erwin has no life gain. Erwin has no counter magic. I can see Ada winning this. Okay, there are problems he disenchant or not. He needs to find a disenchant. He needs to get rid of the karma. That's the first point on his agenda. Get rid of the karma. The question is, can he get rid of the karma? I think he's only played out... Oh, he's played out two disenchants already. Dare we see a mind twist? I'm just not so impressed by the mind twist, actually. Yeah, there we're going to see a counter spell. Yeah, I'm just... You know, I mean... Mind twist is a good card, don't get me wrong, but I think in this case... But do remember, though, that Erwin, of course, looked up the, probably the Mind Twist before the Karma hit the board, or else he would have looked up a Disenchant for sure. And there's a pass. He's just going to die on the Karma here. He's on one life. Needs to use the book. I wonder if Edo has another Counterspell in hand here to protect the Karma. That's a big question. Of course, he's going to use the book. Going to find, search for that Disenchant. Already played out two disenchants, so there's a big chance he's just not going to find it here. And that's it! That's it! Ada won this on the Karma. Can you believe that? When you looked at the start of this match, you thought, okay, Ada was done and dusted. He's going to lose this with 0-2. But instead, it is 1-1. And that is why you always need to keep playing Magic the Gathering. You're never out of it until you're out of it. Anyway, we're going to go now to game number three and see who's going to win this match. Game number three, the deciding game. Who's going to win this match? Is it going to be Edo on the left with the white and blue control? Or is it going to be Erwin on the right with the white, red, black kind of mid-range heavy creature deck? Who's going to win this? There is a Mox Pearl and a Basic Swamp and a pass. So possibly um, Erwin can play out a Hypnotic Spectre here. There's also a good start from Edo with the Soul Ring and a pass. There's a disenchant. That is really nice. Edo not too charmed about that move. And uh, these two are friends, by the way, so don't worry about that banter. Um, there we see a basic Plains Bastard, so no double black here for Erwin. And that could be a lifesaver for Edo. This is interesting, finding a time walk here, taking an extra turn, and that's actually pretty good. Can he find another land? Yes, he can. Okay, this is good. Passing turn. So now he's kind of ahead on land, right? So he can start using that power sink. He can start countering. This is the game he wants to play. And I'm curious to see if Edo is going to try to play out a set troll. We haven't seen a single set troll this matchup. He does play with uh, with four of those. Dare we see a counter spell on the Icy Manipulator. And there is another land tapping four. There's a Karma again. Ooh, only one point of damage though. But still, super annoying. The only silver lining here for Ervin is that Edo is stepped out. So Ervin, play out that set troll, put some um, some threats on the table here. There's Demonic Tutor. Okay, he's so probably going to look up a disenchant to get rid of the Karma. Karma is simply too strong to leave on the board. Remember, Edo is now tapped out, so it's perfect. He can look up the disenchant exactly, play it out the same turn. Doesn't have to worry about counter magic. Get rid of the Karma. This is a very good move. Pass turn here to Edo. There's another land for Edo, it seems. Or not. Okay, there's playing out a basic planes and passing turns. So only two cards in hand for Edo. So he's pretty light on cards. There we could see a terror there on the side of, um, of Erwin. There's a gem day tome in the past turn. No counter spell here from Edo. Interesting. Is there going to be a disenchant instead tapping four? Steel artifact. That's even better. Oh. Oh, bad news here. Needs to find a disenchant or a red elemental blast. I mean, card advantage can win you games. There we see a hypnotic specter. Talking about card advantage. There's an untap. No counter again. Are we going to see a side blast on this creature instead? Another land. And a pass turn. Okay, so I'm kind of expecting him to, when Erwin attacks, use his book, try to find a side blast to take care of the creature, or of course, in uh, a sort of plowshares. Okay, he's just going to lose a land. That's not too bad, and he's going to draw a card in the end step. 
Untap, Upkeep, Draw. And what is he going to find here? I mean, he is playing with four Psyblasts, and I believe three Swords to Plausius, or four, I forgot. But anyway, he's got a lot of answers to creature threats. He's playing with one Control Magic, and this is interesting, right? He's drawing an extra card, knowing that that card could also be a target for the Hippie if he doesn't find an answer. He does have three open to play a possible Psyblast. I guess he doesn't have an enhanter, or else he would have played it out already. So he's playing his land for turn. Or no, he's already played the land. He's playing a mox. Tapping two blue. Tapping three. And okay. Oh, ho, ho, time twister. That is an interesting move. That is quite risky, actually. On the other hand, if he wouldn't have done it, there's, of course, the risk that he loses the time twister. To did not expect her. He doesn't want that to happen. So he's hoping here to find the swords to plowshares in his seven that he's going to draw now. So both players shuffling up. Remember, with Time Twister, you also shuffle up your graveyard. Now, the nice thing is about, for example, when you play Time Twister in a deck with swords to plowshares, swords to plowshares removes the creatures from the game. So when you then play Time Twister, you do shuffle in your swords, but the creatures you removed with it, your opponent, they cannot shuffle that back in. So that's some kind of nice... Uh, synergy there between Time Twister and um, uh, Swords to Plowshares. So he's got a fresh seven. Airman's got a fresh seven. The question is, does he have a Swords to Plowshares? Passing turn. Of course, Swords is an instant. Doesn't have to do it straight away. There we see a Plains. And there is, okay, tapping two. What is he going to do here? Look at that. He's like in doubt. What am I going to do? I guess a disenchant, right? He wants his book back. Yeah, disenchant. It makes sense. It is tapped though. He's getting it back tapped, people, which makes a difference. And he's going to lose a card as well. Really bad turn this is for Edo. Losing a mana vault, that's not too bad. I mean, Mana Vault is nice with Power Sync, by the way. I do see that kind of synergy between the two cards. Tapping two more, casting a Demonic Tutor. Ooh. He really drew into a good, good seven, you know. Demonic Tutor and Disenchant in there. That's just great. I guess he's going to look up... The, the Mind Twist again, but he doesn't have a Black Source, unfortunately, to cast the Mind Twist straight away. Or maybe he's got a Mox Jet in hand, who knows. I mean, this could turn out to be devastating, this Time Twister from Edo. I understand why he did it, but that's, of course, the risk with these draw seven spells. It has happened a lot to me where I play Wheel of Fortune, like, oh, it's fun, we're going to draw a new hand, yaddy, yaddy, yaddy. And then next turn, my opponent... My twist, hand gone. It feels like, what? It feels unfair. It feels unfair. But let's see what uh, Edo can do here, because there's a pass here from Erwin. And it looks like he's just played a Tundra, and he's going to pass here. I mean, Cyblast, Swords, he can all play that as instance, so there's no need to do it now. Tapping three. Okay, there is a Cyblast. In his own turn. I was kind of waiting for that Psyblast to hit the Hippie. And the Hippie did its work and it's eating up a Psyblast. It's done. It's done a great job. I mean, usually when you play a Hippie, it's gone before you blink your eyes. And this Hippie was there for a couple of turns. So it, it did a good job. There is a Time Walk. Wow. And here's that blue power again. Is he going to do something else here? He could decide to tap out, right? Maybe play out an Icy or something. Okay, there's a Chaos Orb. I don't think he's going to flip it straight away because he probably wants to keep Counter Magic to protect it from a possible Disenchant. And then the question is, is he going to flip on the Gem Day? Oh, he is going to flip. He is taking the risk. Is there a Disenchant? 
This is quite a risky move, Mr. Edo. Yep, there's the disenchant. Maybe he doesn't mind that much, you know? Because the disenchant is, you know, very good and, and you can use it for a lot of targets. And now it's out of his hand. Oh, Ancestral Recall! Finding that blue power, and maybe that blue power is what's going to give him the victory here. Time Walk, and then an Ancestral Recall after that Mind Twist. Uh, sorry, that Time Twister. That's just fantastic. And there we see a tap. Is he going to play out, for example, Sarah Angel? He does have some creatures. It looks like he's not, because he's not playing, uh, tapping any white sources. Okay, now he's tapping a white source. Does he have a Brain Geyser in hand, perhaps? This would be a Brain Geyser for three, Brain Geyser for four. Now he's tapped in up for... Oh, a Mind Twist, the opposite of Brain Geyser. This is brutal. This is brutal. There's nothing he can do against this. Oh, not reverse damage. No, not reverse damage. Also a balance there in that hand, by the way. Wow. Balance is one of the best answers to a mind twist, right? When you top deck a balance after being twisted, it just feels so good. But unfortunately for Ervin here, he's losing the balance and he's losing the beautiful reverse damage. Curse you, Edo. I wanted to see that reverse damage in action. There's a pass here for Erwin. I mean, at least he's still got the book. He's still got the book. He's got something. And he's using the book. So, I mean, as long as there's the book, he's got some kind of a chance. It's going to be difficult because you're playing against this horrible control shell deck. But, you know, as long as he's got the book, he's got some hope. He can draw into some extra cards, you know, can try to make up for the mind twist. There is some tappity tappity going on, on the side of Edo. Are we going to see a Sarah Angel? There is a Sarah Angel. One of the three Sarah Angels in the deck of Edo. Beautifully signed one. Disenchant on the hope. The hope is gone. No. I guess Edo is listening in on the commentary. And I mean, this is looking really good for Edo. His hand is um, empty though. So that's something. Passing turn. Now remember, uh, oh, we also see... A karma you're hitting the board. Again, so that's a bigger issue even. There's a Nevernerals disc. That is really good, that Nevernerals disc. That is actually an all-star in this scenario. That is gonna bring Erwin back in the game. We're seeing a lot of like back and forths in this game three. I love it. You know, Disc takes care of all the permanents, right? Except for the lands. So that's perfect. Take care of the Karma, takes care of the Angel, takes care of CLP Red. You know, takes care of at least the Mox on the side of Edo. I mean, it's not a big deal, the Mox, but still, it's a nice bonus. And all that Erwin's losing is a Mox Jet and, of course, the Disc itself. So that's a very good exchange. And I guess there's a pass. I mean, what can he do really? So he's going to take two damage from the Karma. And there's that activation. Makes absolute sense. Okay, there was a Mox Pearl there as well. So he's going to lose two Moxen to this exchange. But that's a super good deal for Erwin. Oh, 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 oh. He's got two cards in hand. Edo's got one. So it's not too bad. It's not over till it's over. I'm still kind of waiting for like the Satch Trolls to hit the board. Haven't seen a single one. And there's a pass. Another Karma from the top deck. That's insane. How many Karmas does he have? Oh, this is very unlucky for Erwin here. He's going to drop to nine. The Karma police is back. Okay, okay, another disc. Another disc. I'm liking this. So basically all this karma did is just deal four damage, which is not too shabby. You know, but it's not the road to victory yet for Edo. Or can he find a steel artifact? There's a side blast on the life total. Gonna go to five. There. Oh, this is such a cool game. Time twister. Oh man, and this is of course really bad news 
for Edo because he's going to shuffle back in all those side blasts. And if he can find a single side blast, he's got the game. Because he can deal four points of damage. Ervin will be on one. Then he gets the damage from the Karma. And it's finito. It's the end. It's done. It's go back to bed. Go back to the house, boy. You know, it's risky. The good news for Ervin is he's actually playing at home. Because the Dwarven Warriors tournament in Vortex is held at his own house. So he's very close to bed. And I'm sure there are a couple of beers there as well. There is a Mox Pearl, or we're going to see a Side Blast, or maybe a Disenchant, or maybe nothing. There is a tap for a White Source. Okay, tapping four. This is getting exotic. What is he going to do with all this mana? Brain Geyser? Mind Twist. Oh, you dirty devil. You dirty devil. Fork! Oh, ho, ho. love it, love it, love it, man. This is such a cool play. This is such a cool play. Aravin, you the man, man, you the man. Oh, man, forking a mind twist, legendary. I think this is the first for the channel. We've never seen this on Timmy Talks. We've never seen a fork of the mind twist. I mean, it's just crazy. I guess people are taking pictures of this moment because it's, it's kind of a unique thing. Oh, man. This is so cool. There we see a plane. So you're hitting the board in a pass turn. So, of course, um, you know, Ervin's going to wait with the activation. And I guess uh, Edo's going to tap four here to untap the, uh, the Mana Vault. I mean, you know, remember, Edo's on 9, Erwin's playing bolts and fireballs, so it's not like Edo's got this one. Edo needs a side blast, yes. But I think if Erwin top decks a fireball, he doesn't have enough mana yet, but he's getting pretty close. So if he draws into, like, a bolt and then a fireball, he's got this game. And I guess... If you're, if you're Ervin and you draw your top deck a bolt, you're going to play it straight away. Because every turn you give Edo extra, it's more likely that he finds counter magic. So, ooh, this is really good. A brain geyser. And he keeps the exact amount of mana open to cast a side blast. Is he going to find a side blast? I hope not. Because I want more of this magic. Is he going to find a side blast? Oh, he's found the side blast. He's winning this one. But what a match this was. Thank you so much, gentlemen. This is just great magic to look at. Very, very exciting stuff. Thank you for these games. And also thank you for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. Please let me know what you thought about this match, man, and what you think about this format in general. If you want to know more about this tournament, check out the description below. Wow, what an insane game. What an insane game. Anyway, this is it for now. Um, before I go, we'd just like to ask you to hit that like button. It really helps a lot. Also, leave a comment and share it to your socials. All that stuff is, is free and it really helps the channel grow. So if you want to do that, it's really appreciated. And if you're new to Timmy Talks, welcome. Happy to see that you found it. Please consider subscribing and hit that bell. And then there's one last thing that you can do to support the channel, and that is becoming a patron. The cool thing is when you become a patron, you're supporting me financially. You become a sponsor of the show. You become a part of the show. Um, I have a Timmy Talks Discord that you can then join. I have um, an end scroll at the end of every video, including this one that I will add your name to. So how can you become a patron? It's very simple. There was probably an info card appearing, and you can click on that info card, and that will take you to the Patreon page of Timmy Talks. And there you can find all the ins and outs and you can already support my channel for one dollar a month so if you've got a little bit to spare i would really really appreciate it and actually talking about people i appreciate let's take a look at the fantastic amazing wunderbar channel members and patrons of timmy talks let's take a look at the end scroll
Ik het als fikker te samba gezien. 